This week, we talk about coffee. Is it sent from heaven or devil spawn liquid? Also, we'll take the mystery out of atrophy and feature the silliest fitness product since the thigh master. Let's get into it. I can't wait to tell you about this new thing I found. But we're going to get into that in a bit. But before we do, I'm going to show you a thing that tickled me old funny bone. Um. This is for all us carnivores out here. It's a meme that says, I'm tired of eating the same things. Ain't no new animals came out yet. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, That made me chuckle. It's true, though. What did we do before memes? Sometimes they just get the point across. Message boards. So perfect. There was nothing. Yeah. There was, was nothing. There was no funny. What do we do before nothing we stuck funny. text on a picture? Why is that so damn funny? I don't I don't get it, but You know what's funny it about is. memes is I'll make them. You make them? Oh yeah, all You're the time. You're a meme maker? Yep. So if I make them and I say, hey, just made this one and post it, mm-hmm. nothing. But if, if I make it and then I say, hey, look what I found. Oh, oh, fucking funniest thing ever. People don't want to give you the- Fuckers. They yeah. don't want to give you your props. Right. Oh, Assholes. Well. <laughs> what does that say about old Dewey? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, what does it say? <laughs> now, here's, a, here's another one that's- Pay close attention to the people who don't clap when you win. Right. Exactly. That's it. Here's another one I found that was- This one isn't really- uh, I thought it was just kind of a cool- It says, uh, it's a way to- Describe what we call an NSV, a non-scale victory. So it says, I take a piece of yarn once a month and measure my waist. Then I tape it to my wall. My scale has not moved in four weeks, but my yarn has. Eh? That's kick-ass. That's good, right? Yep. It's a way of saying don't focus on the number on the scale because if you're, you know, just dropping fat. Why don't you put that on our Instagram account? I just, I know, I just found it. Oh. And Okay, I will. Good job. I should say. I really it. like that. Should have said I made it. Right. It's cool, right? Well, then I would have said it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, I did make it. <laughs> Meh. That's just mild. It's mildly amusing. <laughs> I found it. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, because really? it, it's basically saying don't focus on the scale. Focus on how you, your clothes fit and your body recomposition, and that's really what, what we're all after. Because who, in the end, who gives a shit what your weight is? We're doing this for shallow looks anyway. <laughs> right. I'm just I mean, kidding. <laughs> yeah, but it, true, but either way, it doesn't matter. No. It's, All that matters it, is the, it is matter. the it, amount a, of- That is exactly what matters. Exactly, yep. So, I mean, people are so focused on the scale, but you know, really it's, do my clothes fit better? You know, right. do you, I get in another notch in the old belt? Did you just hole in the happen belt? to re- you're holding on to some water this week and the scale didn't do much? Yep. Stop weighing yourself every single week. Right. Yeah, so that's going to keep... Are you a bodybuilder? Trying to be. And you got a show coming up in a week, in, <laughs> yeah, in, in right. a month? Yeah, or do you need to be in a weight class or something? Right. Yeah, then right. stop fucking weighing yourself yeah, all the time. Matter. Yep. Just hide it. Yeah. I don't hide it at all. I like the yarn. You know, tape measure, same thing. Um, the yarn. So that was kind of cool. So focus on the... Uh, on the, the non-scale victories, as they call them. Now, here's a good one. This reminded me of you when I saw this. Yeah. This is a very Dewey-like saying uh, for our audio listeners. It says, instead of saying, that's too expensive, try saying, my health is just not worth the investment, and see how that sounds. <laughs> Makes you sound like a complete douchebag. <laughs> exactly. So if you're talking about hiring a coach or buying what is perceived as more expensive, healthier food, Right, you know, what's your your reasoning is? Well, it's just too expensive. Well, if you flip it and say my health is not worth the investment, then you sound like a total idiot. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it goes back to that whole intelligent thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that reminded me of old old Dewey. I like it. I'm stealing that. Yep. Send me that. I will. I'll make that my put it up on the old. Might even make that my profile picture. Yep, that's good. Um, so I mentioned in our intro that uh, I found the silliest fitness products since the thigh master and remember we we did a reaction video to some of the dumbest oh right gimmicky fitness yep. products okay well i found i found a new one and this when you see it you'll you'll 
think you'll know why. It's called the Peck Sculptor. Look at it. What is it? It's an inverted Thigh Master. It's at the freaking Thigh Master, right? <laughs> and here's how you use it. Targeted training provided isolated resistance to the pectoral muscles. Dr. For Kevin Cruz, DC. I yes. guarantee you that that guy doesn't exist. That's a chiropractor anyways. Yep. So what does he know? Um, okay, so their, their tagline is providing isolated resistance to the pectoral muscles for maximum results. Well, <laughs> I love before and afters. They're the best. Because in the one, the guy's all hairy and the shitty right. lighting and yep. he's pale. Next one, he's... Just know, got off the... Bench. You, you could have shot these the same day. Right. Just shave the guy, oil him up, put some tan English on him, and flex. Right. I love before and afters. In fact, I saw something where they, there's some big expose, and they do shoot a lot of those before and afters the same day. Really? Yeah. How funny is that? I mean, you can't do it if you lost 100 pounds. Right. But you can take an average Joe. But there's also people who have YouTube channels, and they sniff that out. Yeah. When people say yep. they can go this and this, and look at the traps, and this and that, and they are, that's legit. They can tell if they've actually made a difference. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's more for the weight loss ones. Well, like sure. when you see, because if you just suck your stomach in and stand a certain way and flex and stand up straight, you can alter the, how you look drastically in the span of 10 seconds. Well, you're a photographer. You'd know. I do know. <laughs> and especially if you're willing to shave, oil up, and put some tanning lotion on. It's itchy when it grows back, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just have one question. You know, who who would be dumb enough to order this thing? Jesus. <laughs> you shitty. <me. laughs> Check it you, out, bro. You spent 30, 40 bucks on that? I did. What is wrong with you? Do you like it? Try it out. No, I don't. It's hey, never going to hey, be a workout. You didn't follow. Let All me right. read the instructions. Congratulations on purchasing the Peck Sculptor. It's time to get Step sore. one, slide arms into the pad straps on each side of the device, and with forearms sore. perpendicular to the ground, hold it as far out in as front of your face as possible with coils at approximately nose level. Step two, squeeze arms together and hold the device closed for a second before slowly returning to the starting position. What do you think? I saw you quiver a little. It's, when you're holding it's, it, yeah. It's got something. Yeah, if you hold it. The real, the real test would be to... Oh, that would be good. Buy two of them, see who can hold the longest. <laughs> just go like that. And just say, just right, hold. Go, start the stopwatch. Oh, and then just. That would get. That yeah, would get let me tired. let me try it. That would get tiring after a while. I haven't even tried this thing yet. Okay, that's it. That's how you do it. We would take, we would take a golf ball. Oh, and hold it in there. And then the first. Dude, that's ball actually. Drop. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's gonna be a joke. Like it's gonna be super right. easy. What it is if you don't hold it? If you do, just rep it out. It's, yeah, but it's time super under easy time under tension, right? right? Time right. under tension. So if you you'd probably be better off holding each one for like five seconds, right? And then do a slow. What do they call well, it? The could, decentric. You you could have. I can feel it in the pecs. Though. I mean, it is kind of isolating have, it. You could have just pressed your palms together. <laughs> I'm a believer. Do we? I'm a believer. Ready? So Look, I'm shaking too. <laughs> That's actually kind of hard. To, well, well, the one thing that bothers me though is that, obviously, like for Arnold, this would be super easy, and for a guy smaller than me, it'd be way harder. Even so, right. I mean, it's the same tension no matter how big right. you are. Yeah, there's no adjustable. You just have to do more reps or hold it longer. Right. But I mean, I guess if a reasonably weak person can get one rep, then it'll be effective. Yeah. So, guys, check it out. The Peck Sculptor. Yeah. Can you believe I bought this fucking thing? No. I can't. <laughs> I, well, I, what, it made me laugh because it's so... It's I the can't thigh believe master, that it's still a thing. It's a Thighmaster Mach 2. This is new. This is not even like an 80s thing. This is new. I, I succumbed to a Facebook ad. Crunches up for your chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, look on the site. It says 2019. So that's when the site was put up. What if I did a before and after... <laughs> Took a picture and did it like every day for a month. I wonder. And took an after. I wonder. You should do it. 
But I'm already doing a shit ton of push-ups every day and working out every every other day. So maybe it'll break. that might skew my results a little. Break your plateau. What I need to do is find somebody who doesn't do anything and just give them this. Oh yeah. And take it before and then say do this for I don't know. Because there's a fly machine at the gym. It goes like this. Oh like yeah. Super spread out. Yeah. And yeah. then what I do is I take it with one arm. Just super isolate the pecs. And I just yeah oh yeah, yeah. That fire. That's those mirror muscles. That's what you want, baby. Yep. Everybody's going after the pecs and the biceps. You know what I've learned, though, is the triceps are really the money muscle. Like, if you're Everything. looking for, everybody wants biceps. Oh. Like, they want, but actually, the tricep That's is what, what makes your arm look big. Absolutely. So, you know, do more push ups, more of the dips. Yeah, the dips. Yeah, you're big on the dips. Love dips mm-hmm. for upper body, period. Right. If you're doing dips right, your shoulders and, and like everything, just mm-hmm. your traps, it'll yeah. all it'll all be sore. Yep. Now, when you're doing the dips, do you, do you kind of do them as a finishing move? Yeah, finish him. Yep. So you you do your other heavy weight stuff, and then you just go. I'll I'll use that as a finisher, but unless I make that my actual chest workout for the mm-hmm. day, and then if I do that, that's when you'll see some of my videos where I got like bunch of plates strapped to my waist. Right, so you're going for maximum weight. Yeah. Otherwise, you just do it long, and you said you do the one where you hold, and then you the do the slow decline yep. Yep. as long as you can hold it out after yep. a bunch of bench presses and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, and then that's when you just crush your tricep, but your chest too. Oh, yeah. Because the tricep yeah. is, it's like, I'd have to actually be doing a dip to say like, now, but I can mm-hmm. tell when it, just goes from peck to try. Oh. And it's just like Which peck, one takes peck, the try. weight? Yep. Okay. It's and then the try is just the like just the lockout. So really if you wanted to isolate your tries, you'd really just do dip a little. Sure. And just do a bunch of those yep. or hang in that position. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't use the full range of motion. And it might just be what muscles you're recruiting for that typical spot within the range of motion. Have you heard of and I'll do a term definition on this at some other point, the mind muscle connection. Yes. Have you heard of that? Yep. So that's that what's me- hard for me because I don't, when I'm doing bench press, like I was just doing it last night and I was thinking, I don't feel, I'm feeling it more in my tries and my pecs. Mm-hmm. And I, I know that's a grip. somewhat related grip to the thing. grip width. Yep. Right. You know, the wider it is, the more pecs and the tighter, the more triceps. Right. Yep. But even when I, no matter, and I went up pretty far the only time I could really feel my pecs is when I was like all the way down. Sure. Yep. But throughout the most of the range of motion, I could feel it mostly in your tries. You got to and then push up. Yeah. So how do you isolate and really you have, it, it, use It's no those? different than the people that can go like that with their bicep or like this with their pecs. If you can't <laughs> That's do very that. That's very Channing Tatum of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, you know, move – that individual, it's called firing. If you can't fire that muscle, you hear it a lot of times when people do squats and they're quad dominant. Oh. That means they don't have that mind muscle connection with their ass. Right. And their hamstrings, so they're not firing their glutes. They're just kind of defaulting to whatever yep. they default to. Yep. And a lot of that has to do with um, a lot of that has to do with form and when you're squatting, when you fall forward, then you're you're real quad dominant. But it is an awareness, though. A hundred percent. You know, like a mental, that's what yep. they call it, the mind-muscle connection. Yep. Because you have to consciously try to activate that Yeah, because that's what group. you're trying to work, right. right. But rather than just get the weight up 10 times or whatever. Yep. Which that's kind of what I'm doing, and I'm having trouble trying to isolate the pecs. Right. So you're working for strength, not hypertrophy. Or just... So if you I, work for yeah. hypertrophy, you want to use your fancy little tool. It's not going to make you strong. <laughs> right, but, but it'll work but it, that muscle. It'll also help create that mind-muscle connection. Right, since it isolates it so much more easily. Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. It's hard. It's, some muscles groups are really hard. For me, it's glutes. My asses are super – my asses, both sides, asses. Are <laughs> my asses. Super <laughs> hard to engage. I, I, I just struggle with it. Yeah. A lot of people do. Oh, yeah. That's going to be tough because it – you know, your ass is just there. Right yeah, to take a right. beating, to take a pounding <laughs> all day. <laughs> he meant sitting. <laughs> right? Yeah, sitting. Jeez. What are you guys thinking about? I can hear him out there. Yeah, I mean, you don't. You're not actively ever engaging it. Mm-mm. The only time you would do it was when you're squ- trying to 
you know, weight lift and target the muscles. And you know what else? Mm. Abs. Midline. Oh, yeah. Midline's super hard to purposely. Yeah. Well, except for as, a, as an aging dude, you're always constantly clenching them because, you you know, when you're walking around because you don't want to have a beer gut sticking out. <laughs> Suck you in. So I think most dudes are probably pretty good at that. Walk in the front door at the end of the day. (sighs) All the buttons explode (laughs) off the shirt. (laughs) Yeah. You know what's also nice? We've been talking about, you know, body recomp and stuff. You know what's nice is putting on a T-shirt like this. Okay. You Mm -hmm. know, I'm I'm no jack dude yet, but I can feel my shirt is tighter in the pec tricep deltoid area and yeah, loose in the gut area oh, it crime. did not used to be that way dude that's a great feeling right it's not like, like you need to go buy new like clothes shirts but... are like just snap tight yeah and it's loose around the waist oh, yeah. and it's not like i bought a muscle shirt or something right targeted to bodybuilders right. it's just a normal shirt fits better now right because of recomposition because you're shaped like a man <laughs> i'm a man baby all right well, let's get into this uh, term of the week, atrophy. Oh, wait. No, before we get into that, I want to talk about, I heard a podcast, Peter Atia. We both love him, right? Yep. I okay. listened to this. <clears throat> did you hear this one? Yeah. yeah. I didn't get all the way through it. I did. I, I, when I was mowing the lawn. It uh, takes you a t- two and a half hours. Oh, it was a long lawn. one. Yeah, it was like two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah I, I have a really big yard. I made right? it through probably the first hour. The, well, keep in mind the first 45 minutes is them talking about how they met each other. Right. That, that drags on. It's 156 minutes. Okay, it's it's the Peter Atia Drive is the name of the uh, podcast, and it's episode 167 with Gary Taubes. Now, remember, we featured his book, The Case for Keto, and my, my introduction to low-carb or anything diet-related was Gary Taubes' Good Calories, Bad Calories. Sure, bad. So I've, I've loved him since 2011 when I first even started caring about this stuff. Talk about love-hate, though. You either yeah. love him or hate him. Yeah, he's he's been so tarred and feathered. He, yeah, he is. It's it's kind of interesting, but he and, started out as a science writer, which is interesting because he chased around these physicists and wrote about their Nobel Prize journey, and that's how he got um, exposed to scientists not willing to believe right that when they're wrong the outcome right. And just skewing and keep, things and couldn't keep finding a confirmation bias exactly. So he. He took that knowledge and then applied that to the nutrition field. And that's why he's just been out there chasing wherever the facts follow him. And the art and the registered dietitians are like, stay in your lane, journalist. Exactly. But, right. but exactly you, know, right. you know what blew my mind? Because I didn't know this about him. Mm-hmm. Shame on me. But I didn't know what blew me away was his credentials. Like where he went to school. Oh, yeah, Harvard. Y- and- yeah, he's a Harvard grad. And then he went to... Where do you go after Columbia, that? Columbia School of Journalism or something. Oh, he yeah. did something else, science after Harvard. Yeah, he's, I mean, he, like I said, he wrote books on theoretical physics, and, you know, that's who he was chasing around. Right. But then he got uh, asked to do a story, something about public health, and I, I can't remember. Well, that's how he got introduced to epidemiology, which, as oh, we know, yeah. that's right, that's right. Is, the stor- is the study of people just kind of self-reporting. Right. You know, it's not actually... Uh, finding data and testing a hypothesis. It's more about, right. you know, you're kind of relying on people to self-report. And he saw, like, well, that's bullshit. You can't trust that. So then he started just finding, following the actual data. And that's what led to good calories, bad calories. And, and now it's been a decade of, of uh, you know, nutrition writing. Oh, and that's when he got so much shit for the good calories, <clears throat> bad calories. He even titled it. His book after it, yeah, but because basically the the Seco crowd was all it's just about energy balance. Yep, that's all it is. And then and all he, of a sudden, he fast said, forward. "Yes, but that's kind of irrelevant because if you can't l- limit those because of hormonal stuff or just the hyperpalatability of well, there's, high carb foods, then what good is it?" Th- this is hyperbole, so people out there don't get all spazzy and say, "Fucking guy said to drink gas." You know how many cal? There's like nine thousand calories in a like a liter of gas, gasoline. So if I need to hit my my calories for the day, just chug some. Why not? Chug some ethanol. Doesn't matter. Energy <laughs> balance, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Or we we've talked about you could lose weight on eating only gummy bears. Sure. 
If you stay under your yeah. calorie limit, yeah. of course you could. Your hair will fall out and you'll exactly. die. But yep, you'll go insane. Well, that's not what we're saying. Well, then if it doesn't really apply, then shut up. Yeah, and he just, doesn't say that it's not true. He just says it's kind of irrelevant. Right. It doesn't really matter because if you, what matters is can you hit the goals and what makes it impossible to hit. And you know, there's now there's some controversy because he basically, in the case for keto, makes the case that it's two people, you know, all things being equal, two almost identical humans can have different hormonal responses. So he kind of places the blame on that a little bit. And sure. he's getting some shit about that now. Where he's basically saying, like, look, even if you're within 50 calories of the next guy, one guy might be obese and you might you might not. Because of the the way your hormones regulate, and some people can be in, have to be under further under the caloric, you know, intake need. You but know. the seco people at the end, even if they bought into that, would say, "Well, it's still calories in, calories out." Right. So you know, he's kind of a lightning rod in the oh, in the space. But yeah, I like him a lot, and. For me, his stuff works. You know, when I had good calories, bad calories, I started dropping a pound a day just because I cut out carbs, you know. Right. And, and really, it just came – he tried Atkins back in the day, and that's kind of what yep. what made him a believer, too, in the low-carb approach. So. You know, one thing that – because I start to get sucked into the whole not liking him because it's easy to do because mm -hmm. he gets such a bad rap on social media. But I get – and I find myself coming right back when I listen to him. Right. Because you know what? He doesn't give two shits about what any of them say on it, like no. Instagram or Twitter. He just doesn't care. He's 65 years old. Yeah. He's got credentials for days. He's written eight or nine books on nutrition alone and a bunch of science books before that. And he just doesn't care. He's he's pretty much uncancelable at this point. You know, he's right. almost, almost retired, basically. Right, so he's right. like, what are you going to do? Right. I had my career, you know, but uh, yeah, he he's he gets out there and he goes on podcasts and he'll he'll mix it up with people. So it's it's kind of cool. I, I like him because he's very, I mean, super intelligent. Like him and Peter Atia, there's a couple times I was just way over my head as far right. as them talking about the actual methodology. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, Peter like, gets really far into the weeds. Yeah, you know, some of it's I just want to hear what do I eat? You know, right? <laughs> what am I supposed to eat? I used to think Peter Atia was like, oh, he's so smart. God, he just – he rattles off all this science shit off the top of his head. Just boom, 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 boom. And it's just – with not skipping a beat and there's not a pause in his speech. And he – it's impressive. Yep. But then I realized what it was and that he's brilliant. He's a medical doctor and a – I think a – math major and an engineer. I mean, he's got like 50 degrees and, oh, and all the level. and all the hardest thing. shit. Yeah. Right. Right. But I think he still has some imposter syndrome. Mm. He goes over the top with uh, going into the weeds on purpose. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely a thing. I mean, you, because you come, you're always getting attacked so much, you feel like you have to like crush everybody. Right. And over, yep. over win rather than just stating your point, letting it sit there. You have to kind of drive it into the ground that much more. And that's a, that's a dig level or degree, I guess, of imposter syndrome. Yep. All right. Well, let's get into our term for the week. Atrophy. So. Needs to die. Here is the dictionary definition. Um, decrease in size or wasting away of a body part or tissue, as in atrophy of muscles. That's where we care. That's dying. Yep. Number two, a wasting away or progressive decline. Okay. Dying. Yep. All right. So that's kind of the, the uh, Merriam-Webster definition of atrophy. So what me, got me thinking about this was... When I screwed the two up last week? Well, thinking about... Well, that, but just thinking about the opposite thing, which is hypertrophy, which is we're trying to grow our right. muscles. So the sin, or the antonym of that is atrophy. So, and plus we were talking about last week about getting old and whether you should lift weights. Right. Because this is one of the things that happens by default if you don't do something to counteract it. Use it or it. lose it. Use it or lose it. Um, 
So here it says the term muscle atrophy refers to the loss of muscle tissue. Atrophied muscles appear smaller than normal. We don't want that. Lack of physical activity due to an injury or illness, poor nutrition, genetics, and certain medical conditions can all contribute to muscle atrophy. That's what everybody heard. That's what all the standard American diet Americans heard. <laughs> See? Fucking genetics. <laughs> they just crossed everything else out, and then they highlighted and circled that. Never mind the first thing was lack of physical activity. Right. No, no, and no. poor nutrition was second. Nope, nope, nope. Genetics? Oh, good. Fucking grandpa. I got an out. Yep. <laughs> well... And this is why it's so important to exercise a lot, especially resistance training, because that's what creates hypertrophy, which is the growth of muscles. Uh, because if you do not perform those activities, this, you're going to see this. And especially, like we talked about last week, 15% of your muscle mass a decade is going to go away if you don't counteract it. That's scary. I will. I mean, if you got... <clears throat> Let's say you're 200 pounds and you you know you're 25 percent body fat or what I don't know. Let's say you got 150 pounds of muscle on you, lean muscle mass on you. Well, that's what 22 pounds of muscle going to go away every decade, right? Oof, that's no. not good. No, I mean at some point you're going to look pretty sickly and frail, and that's no, why people just look do fat. That. Well, that too, because. You're not losing the body fat. (laughs) But even if you did, though, that's the point. Right. Even if you dropped and you were still lean, you're just going to still look that much more frail. The perfect diet can't maintain lean body mass. No, exactly. You got to. Right, because even if you have the perfect diet designed to maintain muscle, well, once you reach a certain age, it's not going to. Without a heavy heavy weight and progressive overload. You have to keep lifting weights. Um, But, you know, it's kind of funny because astronauts – Get this right, right? Because they don't have gravity. So if you uh, if so you're not, not just under the force holding of gravity, yourself up, right? You don't realize how much just walking around all day does to to keep our muscles active. Right. Yeah, that's funny. Didn't think of that. They come back and they can barely stand up. It's kind of interesting, depending on how long they've been up there. But even just a, a few days, I think it's it's tough. So you, you know, your stuff starts to atrophy pretty quick. It causes um, <clears throat> time. Hey, nutri- those are poor hey, nutrition. Baby. Those are my calves. <laughs> okay, here's many factors in, uh, can cause muscle atrophy, including poor nutrition. He's a gamer. Boom. He's a gamer. Poor, <laughs> poor nutrition can give rise to numerous health conditions, including muscle atrophy. Okay, diets low in lean protein, fruits and vegetables can lead to reductions in muscle mass. Yeah. But 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 Dr. But, Vegan but. said. <laughs> Yep. Malnutrition-related muscle atrophy may develop as a result of medical conditions that impair the body's ability to absorb nutrients. Okay, well, that's that's kind of – those are kind of outliers. Irritable bowel syndrome, celiac disease, cancer. Yeah, obviously that sucks. You don't want that. So, we're you know, we're looking at things we can prevent. Okay, here's where it talks about age. Okay, as a person gets older, their body produces fewer proteins that promote muscle growth. This reduction of available protein causes muscle cells to shrink, resulting in a condition called sarcopenia. According to an FDA report, sarcopenia affects up to a third of people ages 60 and above. In addition to reduced muscle mass, sarcopenia can cause the following symptoms, weakness or frailty, poor balance, difficulty moving, and lower endurance. Mm. All things we don't want. And that's what gets you falling, breaking your hip, and ending up in the hospital and never coming out. Mm-hmm. A loss of muscle mass may be an ev- inevitable result of the natural aging process. Bullshit, I say. However, it can increase the risk of injuries and negatively impact a person's overall quality of life. Exactly. Look at the ad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, the irony. A giant ass chicken and breaded chicken sandwich from Burger King. <laughs> Oh, so funny. I wonder when they're placing these digital ads, do they have any say? Because obviously you don't want to place an ad somewhere where people are- For sure. Where the the audience is not there. Yeah, but they, why? Well, because, you know, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to advertise Wagyu beef on a vegan website. True. You know what I mean? But- But they're probably figuring, hey, you know, if you're average American- Odds are they want this sandwich. They probably think there's probably somebody in some marketing room that thinks they're smarter than they are, and they went with some theory that, you know what, how many of the visitor, the unique visitors a day are going to come to this website and read this stuff and look over and go, fuck it. Fuck it. I'm going to Burger King. I want the chicken. 
<laughs> Funny. Muscular dystrophy. You know, remember those muscular dystrophy telethons you could have as a kid? With Jerry Lewis? Yeah, that was My a, mom loved them. I had no idea what that shit was. No, every Labor Day weekend, she'd stay up for the whole thing. Oh, my God. Like, for real? Yeah. yeah I, like, why? So muscular dystrophy, I didn't know what this was. I, I knew, I heard the term as a kid, but I had no idea what the hell it was. And so it refers to a group of progressive conditions that cause loss of muscle, muscle mass and weakness. Okay. So it's one of the genes involved in protein production mutates. Genetics. We don't want that. So yeah, if you have that, it sucks. It really sucks. What muscle that. was that? Yeah, it was it? I can't, is that like a bicep? Maybe. That looks like the... Two of the forearm there. Sure. <clears throat> so bottom line is you don't want atrophy. Let's see, one leg. Oh, like when people break their legs and it's in a cast for six <laughs> weeks. Or rupture their Achilles. Right. <laughs> this one's still too small. Right. Yeah, so that you can be Son unbalanced. Treatments. Physical therapy, okay. Um, that guy's going to break his leg getting out of bed. Oh, shit. Functional electrical stimulation, focused ultrasound therapy, Wait, and what are we surgery. Talking about? <laughs> yeah, I think I think we'll stick with uh, physical therapy in the form of resistance training. Right. All right. Well, that's atrophy. Bottom line is you don't want it. You want hypertrophy. Yes. Lift he lift heavy. Lift often. Yep. Counteract that aging process that they say is inevitable. You're never too old. That's right. We had a comment last week on our video that on YouTube that somebody said, I'm going to live till I die. It's like, yeah, there you go, bro. I like that. Just don't drop it on your head and hasten, hasten the, uh, the process. Right. Right. <laughs> God, yeah. Death don't need no help. Kevin Hart says. <laughs> okay. We're going to get into our topic this week. This is, this is a touchy one. Coffee. Or caffeine, your coffee. Or coffee, yep. Ca caffeine in the form of coffee. Oh, but coffee so specifically. Much. I have so much to add. Now, in your nutrition studying that you underwent, what was the general consensus? And I, I have a theory. Well, not really, just more of an observation, is that coffee is one of the most, it has the most misinformation on both sides or just like contradictory information. Because you'll find exactly as many people saying, don't touch that shit as we're saying it's beneficial. But the, the, the data and the science suggests that the people who say that it's good for you it are probably the needle kind of tips their way as being right. Yeah, this, this one reminds me of eggs, eggs or salt. Oh, right. Where for, I remember a picture on, I think it was on Time Magazine of an egg and it was like, you know, this shit will kill you. Right. I mean, it was de completely demonized. And then like two months later, there's another egg saying the incredible edible egg. <laughs> right. And now now we're back to eggs are freaking healthy as shit. Right. So we're back to that again. Egg whites. Right. But I mean, it's just before it was like, don't touch an egg. Don't look at an egg. It'll clog your arteries, mm -hmm. cause heart disease. Right. But it was just one of those things where they flip-flop so many freaking times. Yep. And coffee, I feel, is the same way and, and just kind of caffeine in general. But... uh I wanted to start with uh, an experiment. Okay, I'm going to, and this will kind of demonstrate this. So I'm just going to type in to, and I'm, for, you've heard of autocomplete in Google, right? Where yeah. you start typing and then it fills oh, in, yeah, yeah, fills in yeah. the word. So I'm just going to type, whoops, if I can freaking spell. Easy Trump. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Coffee is, and then what is it? It's well, a diuretic. That's diuretic. Coffee's, coffee's for closers. For closers. Fantastic. Coffee's movie. bad for you. Coffee is good for you. That's like right, <laughs> right there. So, it's you know, coffee is just <laughs> bean soup. <laughs> that's, <fine. laughs> that's good. So, you know, there, th right in the top five results, coffee is bad for you. Coffee is good for you. Right. That's like the two most typed things about coffee. Put the coffee down. So it just kind of you know illustrates how freaking controversial it is. And, and while we're at it, I brought up some, I just typed in coffee meme into Google images because there's people, not, people can't say are you, not. Oh, no, you can't say that you made him. Right. <laughs> people are not, uh, people have very strong opinions. They're not on, on the, no one's on the fence. No one's on the fence. Coffee. Exactly. Coffee. I like this. So it says how to summon me on a Monday morning, a bunch of coffee 
<laughs> on a pentagram. You know what? <laughs> you know what, though? The funny thing is. is Here's what it says, coffee, only one cup, please, and it's like five gallons. <laughs> that is good. That's mine. The people who, the the whole, I need my coffee. Yeah. First I, I drink the coffee, then I do the stuff. Yeah. All those the, things about needing coffee before you do anything in the morning. Yep. They annoy the shit out of me. It's even, like. That, even if you think it's true. Because yeah. you are you live that, don't you? For sure. Because you said you're pounding down a Right, but I don't need to house. have some dorky t-shirt made up. I just <laughs> like coffee. I don't need to threaten the world that I'm going to kill them. No, here's a, well, yeah, they, just, a lot of these are not, like, it's, I'm not a, funny. it's my anti-murder juice or something. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of that. Here's one that has an owl says coffee. I think it's kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why I drink coffee. Here's a good one. It tastes good. It's a pie graph. It says, I taste good. It's warm and cozy. Digestive reasons. Everyone else does it. And the biggest pie is so I can feel something for once in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like you said, there's not, nobody's on the fence. Oh, this one's good. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It just has a, a picture of dark coffee, black coffee. So now here's it's the good. question. Is it good or are they just addicted to the caffeine? Right, exactly. Well, we're going to go through some pros and cons here. Because I wake up in the morning and yeah, tell I, me, tell I, me I you crave the shit out of that coffee. I'm just like, I can, we got a Keurig now, and it works. Yep. We got a Keurig. I drink a th- quarter of the coffee I used to drink. Oh, because you have to make them yep. one cup at a one time. One cup at a time, and right. the cups are fucking expensive. Yeah. So Rather than filling up a giant Mr. Coffee. Right. Yeah. Yep. So. So, uh, yeah, make, you know, make one of those. Right away in the morning, and I smell it, and it's just the best part of waking. It is. I mean, it's just I'm yeah. awake. I smell it, and all of a sudden I'm just ready to go, and I just take that first sip, and I'm like, ah, damn, that's good. Now let me ask you this. If it was decaf. It, I drink decaf at night to curb my appetite when I'm trying to lose a little weight. So when I'm hungry, I'll go make a cup of decaf. Not the same. Okay. Not even close to the same. Now, how about when you're making it, the smell, the... Smell? You know, yeah, I'm like, you, that smells good. But you're saying the taste? Yeah. Or it just doesn't hit you the and, same? And I've even had good ones. They're tolerable. I have some, tried some that are tolerable. I have one right now. It's a Green Mountain, mm-hmm. uh, little Keurig cups. It's it's decent, and it works. Cause like, but you know it's a, it's a compromise. For sure. You're not, you're not getting the same effect. But it tastes different. I mean, oh, it okay. tastes like a non-alcoholic drink. Mm. Where, like, a, you ever had an NA beer? Well, I've never drank any beer, so no. Not a non-alcoholic one. Oh, well, this is for the audience then. So you've well, or you've, how about you've, like Diet Coke versus Coke or something? Or is yeah, that, is that not yeah? Good? That's fair. Yeah, like you can definitely tell. Yeah, like it's it's, it's it scratches it's, an itch. Yeah, but it's not the exactly. Same. Yep, and they're getting better. Like just to get off on a diet soda tangent but like the zero sugar coke stuff zero is good coke zero yeah that's better than diet coke yep it's closer but it doesn't taste like regular coke it's not going to ever nail it no nope. it's not going to be indistinguishable no nope. um so yeah so there i guess you can't so really you're enjoying the caffeine yeah that's that's but, what you're after but how about this have you ever tried caffeine in other forms in the morning like oh yeah I've, i was listening like to a the, monster or well, not not even that, but there's a guy, uh, I forget his name, Scott something, who uh, has the Carnivore Cast podcast, and he mm-hmm. was talking about how he's super addicted to caffeine. coffee. And, and well, coffee. Caffeine but, pills. So then, he, yeah, he tried caffeine pills, like, and just that way he weaned himself off because then it wasn't getting the, all the routine and the enjoyment of the aroma. It was like, okay, I just need to wean myself off, so I'm going to use caffeine pills for like a month and then taper down and then be done. Did it work? Yeah, I mean, he's off it now. but Because I... I, I still think I need to. I don't know. All right, so let's get into some uh, pros. Now, this article is very pro-coffee. Okay, it says, 13 health benefits of coffee based on science. Coffee is one of the world's most popular beverages. Thanks to its high level of antioxidants and beneficial nutrients, it also seems to be quite healthy. And inexpensive. Well, yeah. If you don't go to Starbucks. <laughs> you no know, shit, six bucks a freaking cup. Here are the top 13 benefits of coffee. Number one, can improve energy levels and make you smarter. Well, that sounds like two to me, but I guess they're combining them. 
this is why I think most people drink coffee because of the, the stimulant nature of it. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's why I do. Yeah. So I'm just like, my head's like, this is just dragging ass. It, it kind of uh, mimics the effects of like a 48 hour fast when you just feel like you're firing you right. know, on all cylinders. Absolutely. Yeah. It kind but of, it's fake. Yeah. It's a way it to doesn't get actually you do that. Right. Um, it actually doesn't wake your brain up. What it says is uh, many controlled studies in humans show that coffee improves various aspects of brain function, including memory, mood, vigilance, energy levels, reaction times, and general mental function. All right. <clears throat> so it's a stimulant effect. So that, that's the, the main reason people do it. Number two, can help you burn fat. Caffeine is found in almost every commercial fat burning supplement. I'm generally skeptical of those, by the way. Yeah. And for good reason. It's That's one of the few. They are. Yeah. It's a natural substance prov- proven to aid fat burning. Several studies show that caffeine can boost your metabolic rate by 3 to 11%. Well, if that was true, that would be huge. Because if you can burn 10% more calories every day, I mean, that's like if you burn 2,000, you could eat, you could burn 2,200. I mean, that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, I'd like to see. Uh, and I'm that, skeptical. That is a link. One. So I'm saying, I'm guessing if you went to that, they explained what they meant by that. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to remain skeptical. I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure that little blue link is the fine print. Probably is, yeah. Okay, number three can drastically improve physical performance. Caffeine stimulates your nervous system, signaling fat cells to break down body fat, but it also increases epinephrine, adrenaline, levels in your blood. Mm -hmm. This is the fight or flight hormone, which prepares your body for intense physical exertion. Geez, sounds like they should freaking make this a banned substance. (laughs) It's going to give people an advantage at the Olympics. Right. Just over there chugging Starbucks right at the starting line of the 100 meter. Can't have weed because it puts you to sleep. (laughs) <laughs> but, but you can have Starbucks all you want. That one's silly to me, by the way. It is stupid. We just saw that that some sprinter or somebody is yeah. going to lose their trip to the Olympics. She did. I mean, I get it because, you know, the rules are the rules. rules are the rules. She knew it. I get yep. it. But why not just make that shit legal? How, exactly. I mean, how is it going to – it's not going to enhance anyone's performance. I mean, if – I always say – I always tell people it's a plant. Yeah. How can a plant well, be illegal? Well, so is opium and poppy seed. <laughs> Shut up. Make that legal too. <laughs> I mean, really, the bottom line is, does it give you a unfair advantage or not? And no. Obviously, I don't think People weed, said it does because it doesn't. Weed does because it, <clears throat> it calms them and helps them relax and recover. Who gives well, a shit? So does a massage. Yeah, let everybody smoke weed. Right. At, right at the starting line. Who gives the a shit? The only way to cure performance and this is a rabbit hole, but the only way to, to, to get rid of PEDs Just and drugs. take the gloves off, let them fucking go. Yep. Yeah. All or nothing. Yep. Everybody can do whatever they want. It's a free for all. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine though, if they did that? I mean, the amount of the amount people are willing to sacrifice now, in as far as their long term health, just to like you know have a decent career in the MLB or whatever, people would be dropping dead like even earlier. Who cares? You know, (laughs) are you not entertained? Who cares? (laughs) It's like the movie Gladiator. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a libertarian, I'm fine with that. It would, it would, it would end. Do what they want. It would end the war on drugs overnight. Oh yeah. All right, so let's see here. Okay, given uh, given these effects, okay, caffeine breaks down body fat, making free fatty acids available as fuel. Oh, interesting. Given these effects, it's unsurprising that caffeine can improve physical performance by 11 to 12% on average. Wow. Therefore, it makes sense to have a strong cup of coffee about a half an hour before you head to the gym. That's a big one. That's why a lot of these pre-workouts. I'm still stuck on the breaking down fatty acids. Yeah, it's, that one just seems, I'm very skeptical. But a lot of these pre-workouts, they're full of caffeine. For sure. Because they just. And other things. Because they feel if people go in and just, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm getting it. You know, then they're going to, like, holy shit. I, I lifted way more and it was easier. Because you, yeah, because you worked harder. <clears throat> right. Because you took a drug that allowed you to work, be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. Number four, contains essential nutrients. A single cup of coffee contains riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, uh, panth- pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, manganese and potassium, magnesium and niacin. Okay, well, they're pretty low, 2%, yeah. 3%, 6%. So, you know, I'm not drinking coffee for the vitamins in it. <clears throat> Let's see. Number five, may lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay. They haven't seen the one that my daughter gets at Starbucks. 
That's not lowering the risk of anything. Seven inches of whipped cream on the top. Yeah. Caramel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Car- no, so whipped cream, caramel, oh, yeah. and then Sprinkles. like three or four shots. Six Oreos. Of espresso. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, I've been there. That's what, Left to my own devices, that's what I kind of like, too. Really? Yeah, so I got to watch it. I got to get all the sugar-free stuff and, you know. Ugh, yeah, I can't gross. do black coffee. Oh, just straight up. Can't do it. Um, okay, Sit so, down when you pee, too. <laughs> I should try. For some reason, coffee drinkers have a significantly reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. Well, did mm. I send you that coffee mug from Denver or from Estes Park? No. It said there are, there's no such thing as strong coffee, only weak men. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's good. <laughs> Studies observe that people who drink the most coffee have a 23 to 50% lower risk of getting this disease. Wow, that's crazy. And I wonder if that's healthy user bias kind of thing. You know, if just the people that weren't going to get diabetes anyways happen to drink coffee. Can't say it's because of coffee. Yeah, um, that seems like pretty suspect. There's a lot. Of, I hope they warmed up before they wrote this article because yeah, they're doing they're, a lot of reach. <laughs> exactly. They might pull something. Number six, may protect you from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Wow, they're really pro-coffee here. Yeah. I'm, I don't know, man. You might not ever. You might live to 150. Yeah, just drink more coffee. That's the only thing you didn't do well enough was drink enough coffee. This article is sponsored by Starbucks. <laughs> exactly. Number seven, may lower your risk of Parkinson's. Okay. So they're... It's caused by the death death of dopamine generating neurons in your brain. As with Alzheimer's, there is no known, known cure, which makes it that much more important to focus on prevention. Studies show that coffee okay. drinkers have a much lower risk of Parkinson's disease, with a risk reduction ranging from thirty two to sixty percent. Why the hell aren't doctors prescribing this shit? Why? That's how the is case. there old people getting Parkinson's? And because every old person drinks coffee yeah. all day long. And it's got okay, and it's got a bunch of you know peer reviewed stuff. Interesting, you know. I'll, I'll, but I'll leave you guys. It's funny to go check that it out. the, uh, yeah, I won't go down this rabbit <clears> hole. <throat> but it's funny that the 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 Alzheimer's thing is, you know, type three diabetes, right? So, hmm, I'd have to dig into that later. Number eight may protect your liver. Okay, I'm going to skip over this one because I have a article specifically on that. Uh, number nine can fight depression and make you happier. That tell about true. two. Tell about two thirty. Right, <laughs> when it wears off. Yeah. They need to seek out more. Or like right now. That's why I'm yawning constantly. Yeah, so like it's 5 p.m. so that you're just crashing out. <laughs> you were all cracked out earlier. Now you're just off well, the I cliff. Started, I started working out in the morning. Oh, yeah. You're going to be tired by now then. Number 10, may lower risk of certain types of cancer. Boy, that's a bold claim. Studies show that coffee drinkers have up to a 40% lower risk of liver cancer. Okay, well, I do have an article on that. So we're gonna This is that. like the epitome of confirmation bias right. anybody who wants to to make excuses for their coffee drinking <laughs> just read just this, read this. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah just send this to your mom yep there i'm fine look mom it says health line they wouldn't lie <laughs> number 11 doesn't cause heart disease and may lower stroke risk it's often claimed that caffeine can increase your blood pressure. This is true, but with a rise of only three to four millisomethings per H something. Millimolar. Millimolar per hectogram. I don't know. I don't know these scientific measurements. The effect is small and usually dissipates if you drink coffee regularly. However, it may persist in some people, so keep that in mind if you have elevated blood pressure. That being said, studies don't support the idea that coffee raises your risk of heart disease. On the that's, contrary, in that summary, though, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, it may cause mild increases. You diminish over time. Coffee drinkers do not have an increased risk of heart disease and have a slightly lower risk of stroke. But the blood pressure part's true. Okay. If I drink too much before I go to my appointment, it's they're Elevated. like, we can't let you leave. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, what do you mean? She's like, that's way too high. <laughs> like, hey, just give me a few minutes. <laughs> what blood type are you, Colombian? <laughs> <laughs> Number 12, may help you live longer. Given that coffee drinkers are less likely to get many diseases, it makes sense that coffee could help you live longer. Okay, that's a freaking reach. 13, the biggest source of antioxidants in the Western diet. Okay. That says for those who eat a standard Western diet, coffee may be one of the healthiest aspects of their well, diet. That's well, not yeah, hard to if you're do. having cheesecake and a burger. Right. You know, obviously. 
In fact, coffee may be one of the healthiest beverages on the planet. I mean, Jesus Christ, they're not pulling any punches here. It's out of control. Bottom line, coffee is a highly popular beverage around the globe that boasts a number of impressive health benefits. Okay, well, that was their opinion. Now, here's another one talking about some of these side effects. But the funny thing is, this is even kind of mild. When taken by mouth. Says so when taken by mouth. Well, I don't know how you're... Why do we have to clarify that? Well, to, to be clear... I'm going to Starbucks, not star butts. <laughs> well, there is such thing as a coffee enema. Oh, no, thank you. No, 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 no. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> That's the one you don't like. You like black, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never had a coffee enema. <laughs> when taken by mouth, coffee is likely safe for most healthy adults when consumed in moderate amounts, about four cups per day. Dewey's like, uh, before seven, you four mean? Four cups a day. Coffee containing caffeine can cause insomnia, nervousness, and restlessness, stomach upset, nausea, and vomiting, increased heart and breathing rate, and other side effects. Now, yes, here's one I can yes, attest to. Yes, okay. Yes. The jitteriness. Like if I have over my, I don't even know what my amount is, but I guess just anecdotally, probably a couple cups, maybe like, but... Like my coffees are, you know, 16 ounces or right. so. Okay. If I have like two of those, then I might be really a little cracked out. For how long? Does For a couple hours sleep? after. Oh, yeah. I can never do it before anywhere close to bedtime. No, no. Like if, even if you did it at nine in the morning, no, no, you no. still affect your no, sleep. No, no, no. Not at all. But, but I do feel that jitteriness and like hype. It's almost, it's when you push that hyper vigilant, you know, head on a swivel adrenaline thing. When you push that past the limit, that's where it... Dilated pupils. Yeah. You're just like, <laughs> Everything's on high alert. You're yep. ready to chase down a gazelle. Exactly. So, okay. So I do experience oh, that. So I think you have to know your The third limit. paragraph. Okay. It says, caffeinated coffee is possibly unsafe when taken by mouth. Why do they keep pointing that out? It's because of the third paragraph. For a long time or in I read high doses. Oh, okay. Or in high doses, more than four cups per day, drinking large amounts of caffeinated coffee might cause headache, anxiety, agitation, ringing in the yes, ears, and yes, irregular yes, heartbeats. Yes, <laughs> yes. AKA being cracked out. That's every day. Larger doses well, might cause headache, anxiety, agitation, and chest pain. <laughs> hey, we found the source of your agitation. <laughs> Damn it. Do not put, and it should say, disclaimer, do not post on social media after, <laughs> after ingesting three coffee, pots. anally or otherwise. <laughs> Speaking of anal. Okay, here's, yeah, here's where it gets into the, uh, I gotta enlarge this. <laughs> when given as said. an enema, rectally, coffee is possibly unsafe when given rectally as an enema. Okay. Coffee enemas have been linked to cases of severe side effects, including death. Nah, I'm going to need some proof. Well, it's just because it's hard to get the pot up there. <laughs> wow, okay. Okay. Pregnancy and breastfeeding. Everyone's Kev. laughing in cyber world. You're good. That's funny. <laughs> we need a live audience here. <laughs> a laugh track. <laughs> yeah, right? I'll just play that. I like right. it. Caffeinated coffee is possibly safe. There were, see, these guys are pulling punches. For pregnant women, an amount of three cups per day or less. This amount of coffee provides 300 milligrams of caffeine. Consuming large amounts during pregnancy or when breastfeeding is possibly unsafe. <laughs> Get out till I make a joke, though. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the same as the other one. <laughs> Drinking more than three cups per day per preg or during pregnancy has been linked to increased risk of miscarriage, premature birth, and low birth weight. All right. Also, caffeine can pass into breast milk, so nursing and mothers should closely monitor caffeine intake to make sure it is on the low side. Okay. This Let's... article is why people don't become vegans. It's just super preachy. Well, but they're also pulling their punches. They're saying possibly, possibly, possibly. Whereas oh, for the, sure. The last article was like, it'll freaking, you'll live to 150, it'll cure Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. God damn it, drink as much coffee as you can. And this one's like, eh, possibly, maybe, sort of. Okay, well... So there you go. There's two articles that are talking about um, the good, the pros and the cons of coffee. Again, highly disputed. But then the, here's this the, one here's too, the might in the title. Well, here's, all right. Well, they can never, they can't declare the shit. Hey, Hoka. Now this, this one, this is what triggered me to do this, this uh, episode as a, or this as a topic for an episode because I, I heard this, this study had come out. Um, 
specifically referencing coffee and its effect on lowering risk of liver disease. So yeah, the chart, the title of this one is Love Coffee. It might help protect your liver. Uh, they don't even say might. It says it might help. So that's two qualifiers. Right. It doesn't say it protects your liver or even it'll help protect your liver. It says it might help protect your liver. So that's that sets some expectations that it's not going to be a massive effect. I expect better from Brian. <laughs> Brian Maestriani. All right. So Sounds made up. When you have your morning coffee, you might be doing more than giving yourself a boost to start your day. You could also be keeping your liver healthy. New research presented earlier this month in Boston suggests that coffee lovers might have a lower risk of liver disease compared to those who forego drinking a regular cup of joe. You know what this reminds me of? that The wine thing, right? Oh, drink one glass of red wine a yep. day. Good for oh, your heart. Proves yeah. your heart. I mean, you've heard that, right? You yep. just said it before I did. So... You know, you just wonder, like, is that the wine? Big Is that big wine? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, doing those studies. Because how many people drink a glass of wine because they just because they think it's going to help? They have no desire to. They just, you know, well, I better, I guess I better because of, you know, the alleged health benefits. You know, my aunt Zero. does to this day, two baby aspirin a day or something. I mean, oh, really? big aspirin has really been raking it in because how many decades ago did they say that? Yeah, but it's still true. It might be they true. Still but doctors but still prescribe it. What a benefit, though, to them. Oh, right. I mean, you got this all of a sudden, you know, people aren't just taking an aspirin when they are have a headache. They're literally taking a couple a day. To keep their blood thin. Right, so imagine the, you know, the extra profits that generates. I'm guessing she takes them at, based on her doctor's direction. Maybe like 30 years ago. I don't know what they say still now. Still do it. Is that the, still yep. what they say? Yep. But, you know, whenever something lines up and it's all of a sudden it's a huge boon for a certain, for a company, then I'm always skeptical. For sure. Um, so, yeah. So this, this article is talking about how it benefits, uh, might help benefit liver disease. So, yeah, that's a huge one. So I don't know, man. It's all over the place. It is. If you so, like it, drink it. Don't drink too much. Yep. And then uh, I found this... Uh, clip of Michael Pollan on Rogan. Now, a lot of these, you know, in the nutrition groups, this gets, coffee gets brought up a lot, okay? So it's kind of, it's something I've drank for, I don't know, 10, 15 years. I, I didn't used to drink coffee like when I was even in my 20s or whatever really? because I don't like black coffee, right? Oh, so you were like a Mountain Dew? Yeah, exactly. So still get caffeine. Yeah. yeah, full on, full on. But I, I recently, well, not recently, but probably 15 years ago, started drinking coffee, but it was always the girly type coffees, you know. And if I drank, like, alcohol, I would get margaritas and, like, fruity kind of stuff, you know. Nice. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't drink whiskey or whatever the, you know, the manlier stuff is. Uh, so, you know, but I had to quit all that just because of the extra sugar and crap in it too. So, but I still have drank coffee even when I was doing hardcore and fasting and carnivore and, all, and low carb and all these different diets, I have never given up coffee or caffeine. And I'd say half the people in all the nutrition groups and all the podcasts we listen to, it's half and half. Some people think I don't I don't I can't I'm I'm trying this new approach to my life. <laughs> and I'm gonna practice it on you right now. <laughs> I can't ever remember a st- any podcast or any nutrition nerd in the space, I can't think of anyone against it. Well, I can't, I can't not just, I think some people just think that because it's a stimulant or whatever, it's just not ideal because it's not just a a natural, you know, it's almost like, not like you're cheating, but it's not a full like elimination Diet at that point. Sure. Here's the reason I brought it up. One, and I'll post this this uh, this video clip on of Michael Pollan on oh, Rogan talking about quitting ca- caffeine for three months. It's kind of interesting stuff. Okay, but give me the cliff notes. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, so I don't know. I'm gonna post it there so people can learn. <laughs> <laughs> now you can laugh. So, so you mean? <laughs> So, I, so, I just, so rephrase. I know it's, it's going to be probably interesting. interesting. <laughs> I know it's going to be. Well, you knew that guy, right? 
Yeah, he's, and I love Rogan. He's pretty awesome. So whenever he talked about quitting caffeine, I know it's going to be interesting. Okay, so but here's what made me think of it. Because in car and maybe just you're not in the carnivore group, so you don't see this debate as much. So here, here's an example of. I think you guys are kind of kooky, <laughs> right? Well, here's an example of the type of messaging that we see. Okay. And even she says it even here. If you scour coffee mm-hmm. with carnivore in Facebook groups, you might be confused. There are comments that coffee's okay, uh, it is horrible, or if you're having issues with carniv- carnivore, give it up today. Jeez. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly of coffee. So. Here's the ar- the argument is that it's a plant. So if you're being a true carnivore, oh, beef, salt, and water, then w- coffee doesn't fit into that. So it's not true elimination diet. So that's the argument the carnivores have against it, if they do. Most of them don't, though, honestly. Um, so here's her verdict on coffee with carnivore. Coffee is neither meat nor water. Therefore, with carnivore way of life, it is best to avoid altogether, see? If you don't have any issues that need to be addressed and coffee is your only vice, it is probably okay for you to consume. So there you go. That's that. I'd, I think that's the mostly the view. But you get your super dogmatic carnivores that are like, it's not beef, salt, or water, so don't put it in your mouth. And they're just hardcore. Okay. Kooks. So here's another. See, then you get the ultimate guide. <laughs> Carnivore diet, what to eat. Okay, here's where he references coffee again. I could never do it. He talks about... I could never do it. Okay, coffee. Coffee is a plant extract and caffeine is a natural insecticide. But if everyone tried to get through the carnivore adaptation plus caffeine withdrawal, carnivores would likely become endangered or extinct. (laughs) If you are a coffee drinker, I recommend you keeping it for the first 30 days. Coffee is an okayed exception for most carnivores, though I do recommend starting to wean off towards the end of the month after adaptation symptoms resolve a bit. Though most people do fine with coffee, for some people, cutting it makes all the difference. Mm. It's worth it to find out if that's you. Okay. I can get behind that. Experiment. Try it. Sure. You know, try it for a month and see if you have any benefits. Or maybe you get off, remove yourself from the dependence. Maybe that's an issue. What are the foods that... Sorry, what? I was curious what they said the foods to avoid were. Oh, Anything that's not meat, seasonings and sauces. It's kind of like when you're giving people uh, diet advice and, and you have them log everything, and then they say they went to B-dubs, and they go, did you log the ranch idiot? Right, 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 right. Because, that, you know, calories, right? Well, in those seasonings and sauces, if you're doing carnivore, there's a lot of lurking vegetable oils and crap. I mean, ranch is one of the worst ones, unfortunately. It's full of vegetables Sugar and, and salt. Crap. Yep. Alcohol. Um Oh, and processed meat, that's another big one, too, that uh, carnivores try to say, say. Oh, yeah, avoid. it's just flesh. Yep. Because you never know what they're putting in. Right. You know, lunch meats and stuff. So to give the other perspective, you, know, you think this would be an obvious answer. Can vegans drink coffee? Okay. Well, it's a plant, so duh, right? Of course. You'd think. But he makes some clarifications here. You, or some qualifiers. Have you been to a coffee shop? <laughs> There's a lot of man buns and pro vegans in there. Um, so, okay, what he says is a simple yes or no uh, wouldn't suffice, given that there's so many varieties of the beverage. When someone asks if they can drink coffee as a vegan, what they usually mean is can they continue to have whatever coffee containing drink they enjoyed before becoming vegan? Right. So that makes sense because obviously, if you're having milk in it, that's you're not vegan anymore. Got to have coconut milk. Yep. But what about the poor coconuts? But if one had to sum it up, is coffee considered vegan? Coffee itself, black coffee, is vegan. It's comp- uh, composed of water and various compounds extracted from coffee beans during the brewing process. Hence, it's 100% plant-based. Problems for vegans arise when other ingredients are added because dairy is common in coffee beverages. So, yeah, that's where they ran into problems. Dumping a bunch of milk and cream and stuff in there. So you gotta watch if you're vegan, you gotta watch that. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna play a little bit of this video here. The intoxicating nutty aroma, the rich chocolatey taste. Some days I drink three cups, like the average American I am. 
Other days, I drink more like five or six. But is that too much? First, the good news. It's almost impossible to overdose on coffee. Mm -hmm. There is a lethal dose of caffeine, but it's somewhere around 10 grams. And the average cup of joe has around 100 milligrams. So you likely have to drink 100 cups in rapid succession to OD. Dewey's like, But that's not to say there's accepted. no such thing <laughs> as too much. The FDA recommends no more than four to five cups a day for the average healthy adult. More than that, and you might start to experience some nasty side effects. Uh, you know, most people taking co coffee for, you know, to, to, to increase their focus and the concentration. Uh, once you start, you know, taking in too much, uh, you start losing that focus. People start getting more agitated, irritable. <laughs> That's thanks to the hormone adrenaline. When caffeine hits your system, it stimulates your adrenal glands, which release the hormone into your body. Yes. It makes you feel energetic and alert. AKA cracked out. flight situation. <laughs> but too much can be a bad thing, especially if you suffer from anxiety. But with anxiety, you, you also want to be, be careful uh, not to, you know, overstimulate them to or trigger any sort of panic attacks or, you know, awakening things. That, that yeah, that's true works, too. Which certainly too much caffeine can do. Adrenaline from caffeine can also increase your heart rate. That's why doctors often recommend against drinking coffee if your heart sometimes beats irregularly. But the risk is really only for bona fide coffee junkies. According to at least two observational studies, you have to drink at least nine cups of coffee a day to put yourself at risk of arrhythmia. Why did it? And finally, there's the question like it's a big of deal. coffee's enemy. <laughs> Caffeine launches a double threat on your slumber. It blocks the neurochemical adenosine, which is what tells your brain that you're tired. It releases a cocktail of stimulants into your brain. Adrenaline, dopamine, and glutamine. So after downing your sixth cup of coffee, you don't just feel awake, but full of energy. It will power you through that 2.30 meeting, or the last class of the day. But if you overdo it, the effect won't wear off when it's time for bed. In one study, mm. researchers monitored the sleep of a dozen volunteers. Some were given a caffeine pill equivalent to about four cups of coffee, and others received a placebo instead. Even when the volunteers swallowed the caffeine pill six hours before bedtime, they spend significantly less time in the light stages of sleep. And that can have detrimental effects on daytime function, the authors report. It's sort of like it's just stuck in this, in this loop where you're not sleeping because you drink too much coffee, and then you wake up in the morning and you're, you're not well rested, and then you're drinking more. Can do we relate? No, oh, it's me. It's, it's, it's my... So, you know, some of the reasons they're giving here would be a reason to try out, you know, weaning yourself off it for a month or two just to see what happens. But the problem is, is how do you just get started? Well, I think you have to wean. Like, I think going cold turkey might be insane for, I think caffeine withdrawal might be crazy. I don't, I don't want to know it. I did it one time and I had to take a sick day. <laughs> oh, right. Shit. That's what I'm saying. So all you'd have to do is just reduce your amount per day, like over the course of a week or something. And then. But I don't, I, I don't know. I right. can't go, well, I had 10, so this week I'm going to have eight. Well, don't Next you, though? Have six. No. You'd have to track for a day. You'd have to track right. for a day or right. two and then right. establish right. your, right. here's Baseline. my normal. Yeah. If I'm un unbridled, <laughs> yeah. here's what, you know, if I'm too fist in it. Because what I do, is, and even with the Keurig, people would say, well, the Keurig should be easy. Well. Because you just. To count. You just go, and it, but no. I have a big, huge office mug, and. I put it on the 12 ounce, and I flip it, close it, leave the same pot in there, and then I put it on the 8 ounce. So you're just milking every drop out of there? Well, yeah, but because I get more coffee, and I'm not using any more pods. Right, right. Yeah. And it fills up the big cup. Yep. So really, you using some a little more diluted then. Sure, but when it gets down to about 8... Then I open it up and I put a new one in, and then I put that in there. <laughs> well, what so, you have to do is count your empties. Right, right. You got to count your used pods for or, the day, or just for the interest of creating a baseline, just do one pod, one cup. Right. Done. But I'd be I'd be interested to see what you consume, you know, left to your own devices, and just track it like you would tell your clients to track. Their sure. food, you know, just yep. to see how much it is in a, in a, over the course of a week. Sure. And then whatever that number is, then just start tapering. 
down to nothing and then try to live that way for a month and yep. and track your sleep and see if it actually would be improved. Because anyway. this is one of those tough truths because I'm like, God, I know that's probably right, but I don't want to do it. it. It's For me, it's twofold. It's the coffee, the caffeine, there's too much of it, and my sleep hygiene is shit. We talked about that in the sleep hygiene yes. episode where – um. But I listened to a podcast recently with Dr. Rhonda Patrick and Dr. Sachin Panda. And is this one about the muscle protein synthesis? No, nope, this one is about um Because you did post that. Sleep. Yeah, Talking about if two. you slept if you don't sleep enough, your muscle protein synthesis oh, is reduced by like 20%. Oh, that's a different yeah, that was just that was one of her tweets. That one hit me then like, God damn it, I'm build muscle here and if not if I'm not getting enough sleep, that's it's, when you're it's all for not. That's when your body's doing right? it. Yeah. So it's like you you're better off just not working out and sleeping, like cut out a workout a week and sleep longer right? rather than the reverse. <laughs> right. That one, yeah, yeah, that sleep, one hurt. That sleep, one hit home big sleep time. One's, sleep is number one. But anyways, in this podcast, he goes into the circadian rhythm mm. and he talks about um, the biggest violator right now, for me, for sure, even more so than coffee, is blue light. Oh. And he said, get blue light glasses. That's why I have mine. Are um, those the blue blocker? I got, yeah, I had them added. Okay. I had it added. Yep. I mean, these are progressive. See, that's one of those ones where my inner skeptic goes, bullshit. It but does make a so difference. so many people freaking talk about it that I yep. respect. It does make a difference. Like Saladino and all these carnivore guys, mm-hmm. they're all, of course, then they're all selling, you know, they're sponsored by them. That's some of it. But you yeah, got to think. Take the, yeah, you have to. You don't do know your own. whether they would use them yourself. if they had to buy them themselves or not. You know, like would, they, what, would what, they have tried them if they had to buy them? Right, and but it, now they'd probably buy them. Maybe I know you just don't know. So right, do you, so, have you noticed a difference, one, or is it one of those things where no, it's, I notice a difference? Really, okay. Especially when I don't wear them at night. But and that the the idea there is that you're exposed to too much. Blue light, blue which light is, throughout the course of the day, which is the color temperature, which you find in like Kmart and Walmart and shit. Right, you know, it's just that harsh. It's the well, it's the it's the digital screens, right? Screens yep. and LED lighting, yep, and all these things. And we've talked about this once before, but so yeah, I, I noticed a huge difference. And it's all, and he said a lot of it has to do with circadian rhythm. Your body ha- is on a clock, and it wakes up with the sun, and it goes relatively close to bed with the sun. Which is bad news and really weird, and I don't know how you'd navigate the winter time and up here. But yeah, um, go to bed at five. Every one night. thing that blew me away, he <laughs> said, or she asked the question, and he confirmed that you shouldn't wear sunglasses. Oh, early in the day, like okay. when you go out in the morning, and it's bright, and you're driving to work, and you put on your shades because it throws your brain off. It's like oh. whoa, 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 whoa. Right, I thought it was daytime. Right, so, you're supposed to be coming into the day. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I can get behind that. Yeah, it was that was pretty interesting. He talks about other bunch of other stuff and everything that we know, but we fight, or at least I know and I fight like an hour before bedtime. <laughs> Just <laughs> no TV, Winding no down, phone. Yeah. Oh god. Um, but it's just it's so incredibly hard. Yeah, those habits to break. Or so, it's so tough. and I just toss and turn and roll around because I need to turn the fucking office on. I can gotta fall asleep to Jim ripping on Dwight. Mm, yep. Otherwise, I can't go to sleep. Makes you wonder if you should get. Well, another thing to talk about: light, color, temperature too. That's why in your house it's so important not to get the cool temperature lights. You know, you want to get the warm bulbs, right? That color temperature, because that's yep. the, what your body's expecting at the end of the day, right? Right. And the best thing you could do to go to sleep would be have a warm light bulb, because it, you know, simulates that sun going down, because mm-hmm. that's you know the evening sunset temp color temperatures. Have yep. a have a light bulb and a little lamp, and then read a book, right? You know, yep. With that light reflected off of it, yeah. So that's what they're saying is yep. ideal. Yep. Versus like watching the 80 inch TV with the office on. Yep. Without these on. <laughs> right. That's tough, man. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, but he talks about kind of similar to what you were alluding to a little bit, but he talks about how it's important to make sure that you're mindful of that during the day too. Right. That you're not just, hey, it's not an hour before bed, so I'm good. 
Yeah. And you're just staring at TV or your phone. Which, unfortunately, for most people's jobs now, that's literally what I do all day. Right. You know, and for everybody. You that's should, why it's almost hey, impossible to avoid carpal tunnel. You should. Because you're just freaking, you know, you should, on your keyboard all the time. You should call HR and say, I need I need blue light blocking uh, glasses. Right. Oh, it's yeah, a hazard of the job. Right. I wonder if that's that's re- officially recognized now. I don't know. By OSHA or whoever yeah. oversees on employment. Yeah, practices. I don't know. But yeah, I know my and, and just cool and having your make sure your bed. So I've researched like the chili pad and <laughs> yeah, right. So expensive. Crazy. Well, I think we solved it. We did. Caffeine is either coffee. horrible or awesome. One of those two. I'm not sure which. Or somewhere in the middle. We knew that going in. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of the whole point of the discussion was that there's so many differing opinions. All right, starting next week, I'll do it. I'm going to track. I'll track my coffee. Okay. Yep. You heard it here, folks. I didn't say I was going to come back. I said I was going to track it. (laughs) Well, it'll it'll probably be interesting data. Establish a baseline. Yeah, I'd like to know just because I bet you'll be surprised. Just like when you tell people to track their calories. Are they always eating more than they thought before they started? Like See, the problem with track? me, though, is I know I'm tracking and I'm doing it for this purpose alone, and I'm going to have like a half a cup. It's gonna, you're going to secure your own results yeah. because you're – like I know there's a scientific effect of the act of observing the subject influences the subject. Right. I forget what that's called, but I that's kind of what's know. happening. And when right. it's yourself, that's right. pretty impossible to, right. to not – Skew the results, but I'll try my best. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, tr- I'll, I'll attempt, I'll make every effort. Yeah, I'd like to, to know. replicate my normal morning. Maybe I'll do the same, and then we'll compare, like, okay, and figure out, you know, if I had like four diet cokes and two cups of coffee and a monster or whatever. See, like, and the, the diet coke that is that's the a, sneaky caffeine. Oh shit! Because yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't have coffee. I stopped drinking coffee at nine o'clock this morning, and then for lunch I'll have a diet cherry Pepsi. Right. Yeah, it's like a cup of coffee right, right. there. It's probably the well, same. Not quite. So but it's quite a bit lower, actually, I think. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, that'd be interesting to figure out what, how many milligrams of caffeine are in each of those things. And then in a, right. cl- a typical day, how much are we consuming? And it varies. Right. Well, report back next week. I will. And we'll bring in a few days worth of data and see. All right. Well, we solved it. So I guess we can wrap up for today. Yeah. Is that it already? <laughs> yep. So I wanted to make sure just that. Just getting uh, warmed up. Because of all the caffeine. Make sure you guys remember to check out FuriousMerch.com where you can check out these awesome T-shirts to help support the show. Well, haven't w- you done a rock parody with Meat Eater with the ACDC's Heat Seeker? Oh, I didn't do that. but I, I'm a meat eater. No, but I did do a keto in the ACDC Oh, yeah. Logo. I forgot about that one. Yep. So I'm, I'm kind of on to you. Where's my... We got, oh, this one. Yep. We got the Do You Even hi- Beta Hydroxy Butyrate Bro shirt. Why isn't people, p- you, uh, we got Barflex and Chill. Why can't, why isn't people picking up on that keto, the ketones one? Because <laughs> there's five zillion shirts available. So they're just, you know, it's, it's hard to get anything noticed out there. Um, but people are loving this uh, real food pyramid for carnivores. Is that the one. number one seller? Yeah, that's the one. It even has three reviews. Hey, no way. Oh, I got one four star. What a bunch of crap. The croc? The dumb thing is I don't even make these. I mean, I just make the design and then Amazon makes all these to order. Yeah, why would you do a, So why do I get a four probably star? Probably peop- someone did a four star and didn't even buy one. Maybe they didn't like the uh no, you have to be a verified purchaser to Oh. To, yeah, so that means that's actually people that bought. So go to furiousmerch.com, support the show. That really helps us out. Um, send us emails at info at fitandfurious.com. Make sure you comment on the YouTube videos and uh, watch on YouTube. It really helps promote us, and uh, you get lots of valuable visuals. Like today we went through a bunch of studies and looked at a bunch of memes. You're missing out if you're just on the audio portion. But, uh, of course, if you're driving, you know, then you know, keep it on the audio podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere audio podcasts are found, please subscribe, rate, review, and share. And... We will see you next week.